Today in our urology exit exam preparation, we are going to discuss some pediatric scenarios. We have a trainee with us who has kindly consented to record this session so that it will be a good revision source. Your time starts now. You are doing your pediatric urology clinic. A 18 month old male baby was brought to the clinic by both the parents because of absence of right side testes. The testis was not present from the birth. It was noted by the pediatrician who attended the normal vaginal delivery and uh, they said it is a finding and we can wait and the pediatric urologist will take care. How are you going to take it further? So I review uh, the child with the parent uh, in my clinic. Um, I will uh, perform, uh, I will take a history, perform examination. I will um, uh, consider from the history on the uh, delivery of the uh, child, whether it was full term uh, birth weight. Um, I'll ask about any family history of a similar condition. I'll ask about how the child is progressing. Is there any uh, problem in passing urine, thriving well, opening his bowel normally? Um, I will ask about whether the mom uh, or the uh, father noticed the uh, testis in the scrotum at any time uh, during uh, this period. Uh, I will ask about the general condition of the child, any medical problem, uh, drugs, and any uh, surgery done during this period. And then I will proceed to examination in the presence of chaperone with the patient consent. I will examine the child uh, height and weight and compare it to the chart. And then in a warm room with warm hand, I will examine the patient um, abdomen and then uh, coming to the inguinal uh, region. I uh, will examine the uh, penis and examine the scrotum to see um, the scrotum on the other side um, and the size of the testis on the other side and also the scrotum on the affected side whether it is atrophic or not. Uh, and then I will start uh, palpating the inguinal region, try to palpate the uh, testis. So I'm using two hand, a uh, warm hand, warm environment, and try to uh, palpate uh, the testis uh, from the iguana region going downward into the scrotum. I'm also will, uh, looking for outside of ectopic testis, like base of the penis uh, in the perineum um, as well. Uh, I will make sure that there is no associated congenital anomalies like hypospadias or any anorectal uh, anomaly in the uh, child. And then I will explain, and then according to the examination finding, I will take it from there. Okay. Examination wise, the child is nicely well built and a chubby child, and the right side test is absent, and scrotum also, right hemiscrotum not well developed. Opposite testis is normal, no signs of any palpable testis in the inguinal region or in the ectopic sites, what you mentioned. What yeah. is your next step? So I will explain to the uh, parent that ideally um, undescended testis should be brought down by surgery between the age of six to 12 months. And unfortunately, this uh, didn't happen for some reason, maybe due to lack of communication between the pediatrician and the pediatric surgeon. I will explain to them that since the testis is not palpable, uh, then uh, it's uh, uh, we need to uh, have a, a surgery, try to find the testis and bring it down. I will explain that there is no much rule for imaging, therefore I'm not going to arrange for ultrasound or MRI. I will arrange for this child uh, to have an examination under anesthesia, uh, uh, plus minus uh, laparoscopy, plus minus orchidopexy, and take it from there. Take me through the embryology of the testicular descent. So the testis will be located at the uh, urogenital uh, ridge to start with, and then in the uh, week six, when the uh, six determining region of the Y chromosome uh, uh, stimulate uh, the release of Mullerian inhibitory substance. The Mullerian inhibitory substance will stimulate, uh, which is secreted from the Sertoli cell, it will stimulate the lytic cell to produce uh, testosterone. Uh, so the early stage of testicular descent occurs between the age of 10 to 15 weeks, in which the testis will move from the urogenital ridge down to the uh, inguinal um, canal. And this is mainly under the effect of Mullerian inhibitory substance and also insulin-like factor three. And uh, this will be facilitated also by uh, thickening of the gabernaculum. 
and uh, resorption of the apical suspensory ligament. And then the second stage of testicular descent will occur between the age of 25 to 35 week. Um, uh, and this is facilitated by uh, uh, testosterone, uh, calcitonin uh, gene related peptide from genitofemoral nerve, and also by the presence of process vaginalis and by shortening and contraction of the gabernaculum. So all this will uh, contribute to uh, um, descent of the testes down to the scrotum, which usually completed by the age of 38 weeks. Okay, take me through the surgery events on the day of surgery. So in a properly uh, consented uh, anesthetized uh, uh, tripped child, um, I will start the surgery by doing the WHO uh, checklist. And then I will start examining the child under anesthesia, try to find the testes. If the test is palpable in the inguinal region, then I will open over the testes and do orchidopixy. If the test is not palpable, then we will proceed uh, with a, a laparoscopy. And usually with laparoscopy, I will start first by just inserting the camera port uh, before the other port, looking for uh, to see whether there is any uh, vas or vessels uh, visible. If there are a uh, blind ending, then we can do anything further. If the vessels and the bars are present and they are going through the deep iguana ring, um, uh, then we can uh, look for the testes in the iguana canal and then we try either one stage or two stage uh, Fowler Stevens uh, oculopixy. When will you decide whether it's one or two staged? Uh, it depends on the on the length of the uh, uh, the cord and vessels uh, when we dissect the, the testis, um, so we can decide. Um, although uh, I would prefer the two stage orchidopixy because the uh, rate of salvage of the testis is higher, around ninety percent with the two stage, while with the one stage, it is around seventy percent uh, only. So exactly how the two stage is performed. So the testes, we try to bring the testes down as much as possible without tension and uh, um, to give extra length uh, for the testes, uh, I will divide uh, the, uh, uh, the main testicular artery and the cremasteric muscle, uh, leaving the testes relying mainly on the uh, basal uh, artery. And then we try to um, fix it uh, midway uh, as long as we can bring it down. Uh, um, I can uh, put some proline uh, suture there for easy identification. I leave the testes there and return back in six months. And then we'll try to bring the testes down in the second stage. So why is this important? Why the two stage is better than the single stage surgery? Because it allows time for collateral circulation uh, to happen and this will um, improve the vascularity of the testis in comparison with the single stage. Okay, so if during the diagnostic laparoscopy the testis is found say quite close to the inguinal ring and but not looking very good it's like maybe a centimeter or eight millimeter when compared to the opposite testis which is almost like uh, two centimeter for the child. What is your plan? So this is a testicular nubbin, uh, which may be uh, due to uh, uh, either abnormal development of the testis or it could be due to uh, a mistortion at uh, some stage. Uh, this small testis will not help the, the child in any way regarding fertility or hormonal protection. So I will do orchiectomy for this testis. And I am aware that um, some of the surgeons, they are recommending to do orchidopixy on the contralateral side um, to avoid torsion and the solitary testes. Okay, so the parents were a bit worried about the loss of the testes and they are asking about the possibility of the child's uh, sexual life, parenthood, etc. How will you explain them? So usually if uh, uh, unilateral orchidopixy is, uh, sorry, if unilateral and descended testes is corrected by orchidopixy before the age of 10 years, uh, then the fertility is uh, almost preserved and the rate of fertility at adulthood is very similar to the general population. The general population is around 39, sorry, 93 to 95. And those patients, maybe 90% of them will be fertile. <coughs> 
But if uh, uh, orchidia pixi then after the age of two years, or there is a, a bilateral uh, and descendantesis, then the fertility may be affected. Okay. Uh, what parameters you will look for? Say, for example, fertility and uh, the chances of taking uh, fatherhood. Uh, which one is more affected? Uh, it's usually the count which is affected uh, and uh, the chance of having children in unilateral um, and the synthesis, uh, uh, the chance to have children is quite high, near 90%, while in bilateral and descendant thesis, it is only around 60%. Okay. Now, the time is up. Well done. Again, straightforward scenario, nice flow, no concerns anywhere. Um, just if I have to pick something, one thing which I will pick is uh, when you explained the history, you said I will ask the parents is there any testes noted in the meantime. Uh, and I said that the testis was absent in the birth and it was never noticed. I, I understand you may think that there is a uh, absent testes in the birth and then the testes can pop out and get retractile etc. I understand that. But my only concern is just make sure you are sticking exactly to the case and don't discuss in general. Otherwise, I'm happy with that. Yeah. I'm happy with your options of uh, two stage follow Stephen's repair, which is much more having a better survival of the testes and also depends upon the vas vessel. That's the main thing. The only thing is before dissection itself, you should decide whether you are going for a single stage or two stage. Because if you're going for a two stage, it's better not to discuss dissect much and then just only the ligate, the cremastic vessels and other things, leaving the vassal vessels, arteries, so that it will create a good amount of collaterals. And vassal arteries are also known as corkscrew arteries. They are quite spring-like, so they, are, they can expand and they can easily uh, help you to come to the scrotal anatomical position. Uh, if we start dissecting early, then it will be very difficult and then we are more committed for a single stage repair. That's one thing we just have to keep in mind. Okay? Can you hear me?